And that's what it's all about. So if you would, open up to 2 Corinthians in the Word of God, chapter 6 in, in God's Word. Amen. 2 Corinthians, chapter 6. We have a few dads here today. Amen. And I know some of you single moms also have to play two roles. Amen. Mom and dad. And how many of you know that's very difficult sometimes? But how many of you know God, our Heavenly Father, has the answers? Amen. And in his, according to his word, he is just uh, awesome. He's such an awesome God. Amen. Praise the Lord. How many of you know God has never given up on us? Amen. And he never will. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, reading verses 14 through 18 in the word of God. If you're there, say glory be to Jesus. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 in the word of God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. How's our computer doing? Is it still... Amen. Earlier we apologized. Our computer was... Yes, Children's Church is dismissed. I'm sorry. At this time. Amen. Earlier our uh, computer kept on going back to um, reconfigure itself. We don't know what was going on with it, but hopefully we're all set now. Amen. Praise God. 2 Corinthians reading uh, verses 14 through 18. New Living Translation. The Bible says, Don't team up with those who are unbelievers. How can goodness be a partner with wickedness? How can light live with darkness? What harmony can there be between Christ and the devil? How can a believer be a partner with an unbeliever? And what union can there be between God's temple and idols? For we are the temple of the living God. As God said, I will live in them and walk among them. I will be their God and they will be my people. Therefore, come out from them and separate yourselves from them, says the Lord. Don't touch their filthy things and I will welcome you. And I will be your father. Somebody say father. father. The word of God says in verse 18, I will be your father and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I just pray, Lord God, for a few moments as we can teach and preach about your word, your awesomeness, Lord God, as being a heavenly father, the first part of this message. And secondly, five points and five facts concerning us as, as human fathers here in the earth earth on what your word says and how we're supposed to be as dads. Lord, I just pray that you'd bless every child, every family, every mom, every dad, Lord God. I pray those who are struggling, Lord God, would get through their struggles and persevere, Lord. I pray for those on the, um, on the crossroads of, of a decision that they would receive Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. We pray, Lord God, for those who have strayed away, that they come back once again to know you, Lord. Once again, back to the Father as the prodigal son has strayed away. I pray, Lord God, that you just move by your spirit. Bless, Lord God, your ministry here at Changing Lives Christian Church. Help us to be your servants, Lord. Help us to be your sons and your daughters. Help us, Lord, to be hungry and thirsty for souls to be one to Jesus. Help us, Lord, to see people as sheep without a shepherd. Help us, Lord God, to win this lost and dying world to know you as their Lord and Savior. Lord, use, let us use every availability, Lord, the television, the radio, personal witnessing, uh, our Coffee house, uh, coffee house ministry, Lord God. Uh, uh, all kinds of different ministries that you will birth in the name of Jesus, Lord. Have your way and have your will, Lord God. And Father, we just thank you for that, Lord. I pray for that one that the devil's trying to tell them that they are a loser and, they, and that the God doesn't love them anymore. Right now, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. I tear down that demonic spirit of lying in the name of Jesus. And I pray, Lord God, that that individual would say, I am more than a conqueror. I will move forward in my Lord Jesus' name. I will be used of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord God, we just thank you for that, Lord. We thank you for the victory in our hearts, the victory in our lives, Lord God. We thank you for every person that's here today. Please have your way, Lord God, in this service. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Praise the Lord. God is such an awesome God. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. How many you know, church, since way back in the garden, in the book of Genesis, there has been sin ramping and raging in the society we live in. Amen. Amen. The Word of God teaches us in the book of 1 Timothy that in the last days, many people will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money. In the last days, that many people will disrespect their parents. They will disrespect other human beings. And how many of you know we're in that day right now? Amen. According to statistics, believe it or not, only 33% of children today in America are living with their dad. That's 66%, two-thirds that are not living with their earthly father. Amen? Amen. 
And how many of you know that as time goes forward, things aren't going to get any better, they're going to get worse. I'm not here to be pessimistic, but how many of you know the scriptures teach in the Word of God that Jesus is going to be coming back soon? That there's going to be a, there's going to be, everybody's going to, a lot of people are going to grow very cold to the things of God. Amen. People are going to be going and just having a religious spirit, going through the motions without having a personal relationship and having, and getting closer and closer to God. Amen. But I just want to encourage you, church, that keep on persevering, keep on moving forward with the Lord like never before. Amen. Don't look to your left and to your right and behind you and see what brother or sister or that one's doing or this one's doing. Don't worry about what they're doing. Pray for them. You yourself serve the Lord with all of your heart. Amen. Today we need a Noah spirit. That is, that everybody else in the world may be going ahead and sinning, but you yourself are going to keep on building that ark. You're going to obey the Lord, and you're going to keep on moving forward in the name of Jesus. Amen. The devil tries to tell you that you're a loser, but God says that you're a winner. How many of you know the devil's a liar, and he's going to spend an eternity in the fryer? Can somebody say glory to God? Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. The first thing I want to look at, dads, is, is God, our Heavenly Father, God the Father. How many of you know He's just an awesome Father? He's with us all the time. Jesus said He'll never leave nor forsake us. He's always right there. Amen. He loves us unconditionally. Amen. God the Father sent His only begotten Son, that is Jesus Christ, to come from heaven to the earth to die on the cross and shed His precious blood. Amen. amen. For all who believe. Amen. The Bible teaches that for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish but have what everlasting, everlasting life yeah. the Bible goes on to say if you confess that Jesus is your Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead you will be saved amen how many know praise God it's a relationship with God and that's what he wants amen glory be to God you know sometimes you think how can we serve this God in which we have never seen with our eyes but how many know we truly do see him concerning his creation we see him, amen, when there's a full moon. We see him in the beautiful majesty of all the stars in which he's, he's, he has created. We see him in the solar system. We see him in all the animals and the birds and everything that he has created, amen. We see him when we pray to him. We can feel his presence, amen. Praise be to God. You know, the, Jesus said the Holy Spirit is like the wind. We see the effects of the wind, but we don't see the wind itself. Amen. We can see the effects of the Holy Spirit moving upon many Christians today. Amen. amen. God is such an awesome God. Amen. Praise be to God. First point out of these four points uh, concerning a father to follow, and that is, of course, God the Father. Amen. To all who believe, Romans chapter 4, verse 11 says in the Word of God, it says circumcision was a sign that Abraham already had faith and that God had already accepted him and declared him to be righteous, even before he was circumcised. So Abraham is the spiritual father of those who have faith and have not been circumcised. They are counted as righteous because of their what? Because of their faith. Amen? How many you know, praise God, how do we know that God exists? It's because we have faith. Amen. It's because we believe what his word says. It's because we have accepted him. Jesus Christ is our personal Lord and Savior. Amen? Amen. You know, the, the, the barometer for showing that we really believe in him is living a godly life throughout the course of the week. Amen? Amen. Not just in church on Sunday morning, but living a lifestyle of worship. Living a lifestyle of praise. Amen. Saying no to that temptation. Amen. No, knowing that that's the devil's lie. Amen. Saying yes to Jesus. Amen. amen. Receiving who God says that we are. That's right. Now that's critical. Amen. Maybe we can quote the scriptures about who God says we are. And maybe we can even memorize them. But how many you know we've got to accept in our heart who God says that we are? Amen. You see, when somebody comes to you and says, you're stupid, you're a loser, you're this, you're that. You don't have to receive that. Yes. You can say in your heart, look, I, the only one that really matters to me is what God says about me. And he says that I am more than a conqueror. He says that I am the head, I'm not the tail. I'm going to be the lender, not the borrower. Yes. Amen. He says that I'm the apple of his eye. He says that he loves me unconditionally. He says that I'm not a mistake. I'm on this earth for a purpose and for a reason. Amen. Amen. He says that I am a winner. I am not a loser. Amen. Amen. And so if you walk in who, the identity of who you are in Christ Jesus, you will have victory. Yes. Amen. Amen. You see, the world says that the world says your status and, and your fame and how much money you make is really who you are, but that's not the truth. Amen. You can make, you know, uh, six digits a year, two hundred, the hundred thousand dollars or whatever a year, and that's great. Praise be to God. But that's not who you are. Amen. You can have a degree on your wall, a PhD. Degrees all over your wall. You can be a, a lawyer, a doctor, or whatever you might be, a rocket scientist. But how many you know that's not who you are? 
as a Christian, you are a believer. You are a son and a daughter of God, amen? And you are on your way to heaven. You are a winner. You are not a loser. You are not a product of your past on this earth. You are a product of your present and the future of what God says about you. Jeremiah 29, 11. I have given you a good future and a great hope. Amen? Amen. How many of you know we're, we're headed for a great future and a great hope? Amen. Praise be to God. Give the Lord a hand. Amen. <laughs> Praise be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, without going through the fire as believers, we will never get to the place of promotion where God wants us. Oh, yes. Amen? Amen? When you go through the fire in your life concerning different issues and different things, and you say, Lord, I don't understand what's happening right now. I don't know what's going on. I have not even a clue, but I am going to just trust you through this thing. I am going to, I'm going to, Jesus, you're going to walk me right through it. You're going to pick me up, and you're going to walk me through this thing, and I know, Lord God, that you've got a blessing ahead of me. Oh, yeah. Amen? If you ask any large ministry on the air, on television, uh, how did you start off? They didn't just start off with like 10,000 people on Sunday morning in their attendance. They went through the fire before they got to where they were. Somebody in that church made some serious sacrifices in order to get to where they are today. Amen. And they've learned a few things. God is in the business of stripping our pride and making us humble. Amen. When we're humble before the Lord and we don't feel like we're, you know, lifting ourselves above anybody else or whatever the case is and we say, Lord, I'm just your servant, I'm your son or I'm your daughter and I'm doing your work to, to what I'm called to do, praise be to God, that's what God blesses. Amen. Somebody say glory be to God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So how many of you know, church, we're blessed fathers, those who have chosen him. We've got to choose the Lord and say, Lord Jesus, I receive you in my life. I receive you in my heart to be my personal Lord and Savior. Amen? How many of you know that all the people in the world are not God's children? Yes. Amen. Amen. So true. Isn't that correct? Amen. Somebody says, well, every, well, all of us, everybody in the world are God's children. No, they're not. God's children are ones who have received Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. Yes. God has created every one of us. Yes, he's created everybody in the world. Amen. And the Bible gives the invitation to the entire world. John 3.16. Amen? Amen. But how many of you know that invitation goes out and you have to receive that invitation? Amen. You can't say, well, I don't know if I'm going to receive it or not. You know, I might... I might not receive it one day, I may not, whatever. You just made a decision and not making a decision. You said no. Yes. How many of you know you've got to receive Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior? Amen. Amen. Praise be to God. And that's the only way you can be a son or a daughter of Almighty God. Amen. Praise Amen. be to God. God is such an awesome God. Amen. Now God the Father sacrificed His Son for you. Amen. He sent His only begotten Son. Lord. I don't know about you dads, if you have a son, amen, and uh, if you had to go through a situation where people hated Him, and he went to the earth in order to live a perfect life. And then, and then people that hated him crucified him. They spat upon him. They, they punched him. They pulled his beard out. They put a, a, a crown of thorns on top of his head. Amen. They, they went ahead and they, they hated him and despised him. And then all of a sudden you had to hold back your wrath. Yes. Amen. I don't know if that would be possible if that was me, to be honest with you. <laughs> Amen? Amen. I'd probably do the barbecue scene. <laughs> Amen? Amen? How many of you know we have to know and understand God the Father is such a loving God and He loves every one of us so much that He knew that this day, on June the 15th, 2014, on this day that we celebrate Father's Day in America, that we'd be sitting right here. Amen. He knew that we'd receive Him as our personal Lord and Savior, His Son, Jesus Christ. That's what held back the, God the Father's wrath. Amen? Amen? That's what held His hand back. Because let me tell you something, it's not that God didn't have the power. I mean, Jesus could have said with a, with a heartbeat, one word in legions of angels would have literally killed every single one of those Roman soldiers. They would have been gone. Could Jesus have got off the cross when he was on it? Absolutely he could have. But he knew if he did that, we wouldn't be saved because there's no sacrifice to be paid. The Bible calls give the Lord a hand. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Bible calls Jesus the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Amen. Praise be to God. There had to be an ultimate sacrifice. And his name is Jesus. Amen. One person said, well, you know, uh, if God gives me this, and if he gives me that material thing, and if he gives me uh, more money, then I might serve him. You know, God has done everything for you already. Amen. By Jesus dying on the cross, he's done everything Amen. he can do. Amen. As far as the stuff in the world, how many of you know people with more and more stuff? The stuff's not going in your grave with you. Amen. Isn't that right? Yeah. It's not going in your grave with you. So why focus on the stuff so much in this temporary world and leave Jesus out? Why do other things on Sunday morning at home or at work while you could be in the house of God worshiping? 
Because really, at the end of the day, at the end of life, the only thing that's really going to matter is what we've done with Jesus when we're alive in this earth. That's all that's going to matter. Nothing else will matter. Amen. Somebody say glory to God. Praise God. So first of all, to all who believe, secondly, is an example to follow. How many of you know 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12 tells us in the Word, don't let anyone think less of you because you are young. Be an example to all believers in what you say, in the way you, in the way you live, in your love, your faith, and your purity. Amen? Praise God. Look what Paul, Paul the Apostle, you know, uh, Timothy is his, his, if I could use the term, spiritual son. And uh, Paul the Apostle is like his spiritual dad. And he's telling Timothy in his first letter as he's writing to Timothy, he says, don't, Timothy, listen, you know, don't let anyone think any less of you because you're young. Amen? Timothy was called to be a man of God. He was called to be a minister, a pastor. He was called to be a person to preach the gospel. We see in the scriptures that Timothy's father is not mentioned. His mother and his grandmother are mentioned. But his father's not. We don't know what happened. Maybe his father passed away. Something happened. We don't know. But Timothy was kind of shy. That's why, that's why the Apostle Paul tells Timothy in another scripture, he says, God, Timothy, God has not given you the spirit of fear. But he has given you love, power, and of a sound mind. Amen. What is fear? That word fear is talking about being afraid of people. Being afraid, amen, and just kind of being timid, being too shy. How many of you know that God wants us to have the power and the boldness of the Holy Spirit of God? Amen. He wants us to tell people the truth, whether they like it or not. Not to, not to, not to come against them, but to tell them the truth in the Word. Speak the truth with love is what the Bible teaches, amen? So God wants us to move forward, amen? It's an awesome responsibility, amen, that Timothy had. Dads, how many of you know we have an awesome responsibility too? Amen. Bringing up our children. How many of you know our children are with us for a certain amount of time? They're kind of lent to us. And then eventually they leave the home and they go on their own. It's what they learn in the home. What they learn in the home is what they're going to do with their lives when they leave. Amen. That's not to say that they've learned a lot of good godly things in the home and for a little while to be the prodigal son or daughter. That happens too, amen? amen. But how many you know we have the promise of God they're going to come back? Amen. Because the seed planted within a man or woman's heart when they're little is what is going to take root and be watered when they get older. Amen. amen. And you can't get away from that. Amen. Glory to God. So we have a responsibility. Amen. And how many you know the children are a blessing? Amen. amen. How many you know kids are a blessing? Amen. You know, that's why the Bible tells us, amen, the Bible tells us do not have abortions. How many you know abortions murder? Amen. It's just taking what God has created and killing it. Amen. Correct? Yes. Amen. I mean, human beings are precious. And again, I'll remind you, the Bible says in the last days, what's going to happen? People are going to disrespect other people more and more. Yes. What's happening right now? You turn on the news, there's a gun shooting almost every week, somewhere in America. Yes. Somebody's just taking a gun, walking into a mall and just shooting people at random for no reason. There's, people are angry today. People just, they don't care. They don't have morals. They, they just go ahead and do what they want to do. Amen? And so we're living in that type of world today. It's very important that we pray a hedge of protection around our children. It's very important, amen, that we go ahead and pray a hedge of protection around our family. When you get behind that wheel, pray a hedge of protection around that vehicle, amen, and around yourself and who's ever in that vehicle. Pray that God would just have his way and his will, amen? Praise God. So we have to be an example in word, what we say, in lifestyle, how we live, giving sacrificially unto the Lord all that we are, our faith and our purity. Amen? What about morality in the world today? You don't see a lot of people that like to live a holy life. Amen? How many know for the Christian we need to live a holy life? Amen. We need to live a holy life unto the Lord Jesus Christ. You know something? Amen. Let me give you a little key. The power of your prayer is you living a holy life. If you're living a holy life, your prayers will get through to God a lot quicker. Amen. Amen? Because the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much, James 5 and 16. So if we're living right, according to the word of God, as, you know, if we're living right, we can say, okay, Lord, I'm praying and I know my faith is increased because I know how I'm living. You can't trick yourself. You can trick other people, but you can't trick yourself. Amen. So if you're living according to the Word of God and you pray, do you realize that God gives you more faith 
that when you're praying, the things are going to happen in your prayers. Amen. And the more faith we have in prayer, that releases God in order to answer those prayers. Amen. Many people on one occasion in the Bible, in the Gospels, you know, there was, a, there was people all over Jesus. He was walking down the road one particular day with his disciples. People were all around him. Hundreds and hundreds of people were flocking Jesus. I mean, they were bringing their kids to Jesus. They were saying, bless me, bless me. They were, they were trying to touch Jesus and so forth. And I'll tell you what, they were doing all this without faith. They were doing it because they heard that, wow, he heals and he can do this for me, he can do that for me, whatever. But they really were going along, but they really weren't doing it with faith. But there was a woman, the Bible says in the, in the Word of God, that had an issue of blood for 12 years. She had a hemorrhage. She was literally bleeding with, from within for 12 whole years. She heard about Jesus. She heard that he heals. And she went ahead and she says, if I could only touch the hem of his garments. That was faith talking in her spirit. That was faith talking in her spirit. If I can touch the hem of his garment, I will be healed. Not, I wonder if he'll heal me if I touch the hem of his garment. She's the one who began the faith. She's the one in her heart that said, if I do this, I know this will happen. So we can say in the name of Jesus that if I do this, I know this will happen. Amen? Amen? So she went ahead and she pushed through the crowd. Think about it, ladies. Amen? Think about that for a moment. Twelve years. Mm. How many of you know you, you, you're pretty weak? You probably got anemia. Mm -hmm. Amen? You, you, you're, you're just trying to push through this crowd and you're so tired. Mm. You're broke. You see, the Bible says she spent every dime she had. Her savings account was gone. She, her IRA was gone. <laughs> Amen. She had every dime she had, she spent on doctors and tried to heal her and they couldn't do anything for her. So here it is, a woman who's in poverty, who doesn't have any money. She's trying to push through the crowd in order to touch Jesus. The King James says the word press. P-R-E-S-S. -E -S. She pressed. She pushed through the, through the press. Amen. She pushed and she pushed and she pushed and she, that was her perseverance. Remember what I mentioned earlier? Your victory is in your perseverance. If she gave up halfway through and said, oh, forget it. I'm just too tired. I'm going to go home and take a nap. This is just crazy. I don't think I can go to church today. I'm just too tired. God will understand. I'm just going to sleep in. Kind of like a lot of Christians do today. Amen. And she persevered and she pushed through and she touched the hem of his garment. Immediately the Bible says Jesus stopped dead in his tracks. He's turned around and says, who touched me? Immediately, now, now, how many times in the Word of God do you see Jesus speaking in the spiritual and his disciples are receiving it in the natural? <laughs> Amen? Amen? Did God ever tell you something and you take it in the physical, but he's actually talking to you in the spiritual? Jesus says, who touched me? His disciples look at him going, I could have just seen Peter right next to John. John, he's losing it. Maybe, he's, you know, he could be dehydrated. He's been around for a while ministering to all these people. Maybe we should give him more water. I mean, there's hundreds of people that are touching him. What do you mean, who touched me? Is something going on, John? I don't know, man. I'll tell you what. <laughs> Think about what they were thinking. What do you mean? Who they went up to the Lord and says, what do you mean who touched you, Lord? I mean, there's hundreds of people here. They're, they're all over you. They're touching you. They're, you know, hey. You know. But what is he saying? Who touched me with faith? Amen. And what God is saying this morning on this Sunday morning is how many churches, how many people that came to church are coming to church and they're touching Jesus with faith? Amen. Amen. They're not just coming to church. I'm going to go through the motions and I'm just going to go ahead and I'll go ahead and, you know, and, and so forth and punch my spiritual time clock on my time. Cut and maybe I'll get into heaven. No, not with that attitude. They're coming. I'm coming in faith in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. They hear about somebody that has cancer. You come up here right now in the name of Jesus. Let's anoint you with oil and get rid of that crap. Amen. Get rid of that cancer in the name of Jesus. Instead of being afraid of the cancer, being afraid of the Goliath, being afraid of that spirit, amen, of intimidation. Too many times we're afraid as Christians of intimidation, amen? And the devil's the one who puts intimidation upon us. Amen. But you see something? If you've been in the woods for a long time as a teenager, and if you're going ahead and learning a few things about God, you'll be a David coming out of those woods. Amen. And when you see the current situation going on, you're going to say, what in the world's going on here? Israel? God, you know, you're the sons and daughters of God and you're afraid of this Goliath? You don't think our God can take him down? Amen. 
Amen? You can look at that spirit of intimidation and say, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Amen? Who is this thing that thinks he can defy God himself? Amen. See, Goliath was this big compared to God. Amen. Amen? So David went ahead and says, okay, let me go ahead and use what I have. I got a slingshot. Okay, let me use a slingshot. I got five stones. And they're all mocked. The first one was called J. Then the second one, E. The third one, S. The fourth one, U. And the last one, S. Jesus. But he took the J, and that's all he needed. <laughs> and he went ahead and wham! And Goliath, right, you know, how many know the Holy Spirit directs things against the enemy? As long as we take the step of faith and use what we have in order to accomplish what God wants to do. If we don't use what we have to accomplish what God wants to do, nothing will happen. If Moses never took the stick in which he is carrying that God has given him, the Red Sea never would have opened up. Amen? So we have to use what we have in order for God to accomplish what he wants to accomplish. So you see, it's, it's, we work hand in hand with God. Amen? Amen? Let's say somebody was looking for a job, for example. And, you know, you're saying, God, I've been praying, I've been praying, I've been praying. God, send me a job, send me a job, send me a job. Then God's telling you, look in the newspaper for a job. Go on monster.com, on the internet, look for a job. Start telling people you're looking for a job. Go, in, in, go for interviews getting a job. All right? Then you'll get a job. Amen. But don't expect God to send you a letter in the mail. I'm not looking at all. I've been out of work for a long time. And all of a sudden, God sent you something in the mail. You've got a job. You've got mail. Amen. 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 How I many you know we have to? You have to understand when we work together with God, things accomplish. Amen. The Bible says that Jesus is the head; we are the body. Amen. We are the hands and the feet of God. Yes. He's the boss. He's the miracle one. He's the one that causes the miracles to happen. But if we don't move forward in faith, nothing can be accomplished in the kingdom of God. Right. We have a vision in this church, and that is the bottom line: is to save souls for Jesus. We want to see people accept Christ as their Lord and Savior. We want to see people grow in the things of God. Amen? There are a lot of ways to do that. You have a food pantry, that's great. We're providing groceries for people. We don't only want to fill their tummies. We want to fill their soul. We want to see them accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Amen? See, we, we want to move forward in the name of Jesus and have people accept Christ. And that's what it's all about. Amen? Somebody say, glory be to God. My third point is this. It's a comforting touch. How I many know oh God the Father is a comforting touch? Amen? Amen. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians, uh, 2 Corinthians, rather, chapter 1, verses 3 and 4, All praise to God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is a merciful Father and the source of all comfort. How I many know oh He's the source of all comfort? That's right. Amen? He comforts us in all our troubles. In all our troubles, amen? Praise God. He comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort others. Yes, that's right. When they are troubled, we will be able to give them the same comfort God has given us. Amen. Let me ask you a question. I was thinking about this um, just yesterday. Who is your run-to person? What do I mean by your run-to person? When you feel like life is falling apart, when you feel insecure, really bad about something, I'm just going to move the vacuum right over here, brother John, okay? Amen. When you feel the fear in your life, when you feel extremely worried, you just got some bad news, or something bad has happened, or whatever the case is, who is your run-to person? How many of you know a run-to person should be Jesus? Amen. Now, it's okay to talk to somebody when you're down. Don't misunderstand me. But how many of you know our run-to person has to be, i got to get along with God. He is the source of all comfort, and when I get alone with him, he's going to comfort me in my situation so I can be used in ministry to comfort other people. Amen. Amen? So in other words, he comforts us, and we go to him. The Bible says don't worry about anything. What? Instead, pray about everything. So if we're not worried about anything, how many know we can pray about everything? We're worried about something? Go to the Lord in prayer. Just get, leave it at the cross. Give it to the Lord. Amen? That's why, how I many, you know, even when things are going good in our lives, we got to get along with, the, with God. we got to be people of prayer. Because when things really fall apart, amen, you're not used to getting along with God, so you might just lose that. That's why when we pray, how I many you know things happen? We've got to get in prayer, amen? We've got to be people of prayer. Prayer is communication with God. Prayer is listening to God. Prayer is moving the hand of God, amen? Prayer is getting direction. Prayer is getting wisdom. Prayer is listening to the small, still voice of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Prayer is not just giving a list of, God, I want this, 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 and then like a Christmas list at Santa Claus, amen? Prayer is going ahead and receiving what God has and allowing things to change in your heart, in your life. 
Praise be to God. Fourth point is, how many know God the Father is a teacher to listen to? Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17 says, it says, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. Amen? Amen. You know, there's nothing like God giving us spiritual wisdom. The wisdom of the world you can get, okay, the wisdom of Egypt, whatever you want to call it, the world, you know, but how many you know the wisdom of God is awesome? Amen. God gives us discernment sometimes when we're praying for somebody. God gives us some no a word of knowledge that we don't know in the natural, but God the Holy Spirit gives that to us so we can help somebody else. Yes, when we start believing in the gifts of the Spirit, that's when we're going to be used in the gifts of the Spirit. Oh, Amen? Right, yeah. But if you don't believe in the gifts of the Spirit, God can't move. He can't even make that happen in your life. Oh, right, Amen? God is never going to do anything that you don't let happen in your life. Amen? Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He's never going to force himself on anybody. Amen? So church, God is a father that you can follow anywhere, anytime, in any place. Amen? And, and dads, we all need to ask ourselves this question. Are we that kind of father? Amen? To our children. Are you a father that your children can count on? Amen? Even when your kids mess up in life, are you just going to say, that's it? I don't love you no more. Get out. Amen? How many of you know we get to love our kids unconditionally? Amen. Our Heavenly Father loves us unconditionally or else we would have been all done a long time ago. Yes. Every one of us would have been all done. Amen? Amen? Now let's talk about five tools for fathers that make a difference in conclusion of this message today. Amen? Proverbs chapter 23 verses 22 to 25 in the Word says, Listen to your father who gave you life, and don't despise your mother when she is old. Get the truth and never sell it. Also get wisdom, discipline, and good judgment. The father of godly children has cause for joy. What a pleasure to have children who are wise. So give your father and mother joy. May she who gave you birth be happy. Amen. 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 Isn't it great to please mom and dad? Isn't it great to go ahead and, you know, and to do things, amen, and to say, you know, praise God, I want to give my parents joy. I don't want to give them a burden. I don't want to make life hard for them or tough for them, amen? So the number one way to make a difference in this world is to fulfill the God-given responsibility to teach your children the ways of God. Proverbs 22 verse 6 says, Teach your children to choose the right path, and when they are older, they will remain upon it. Amen? How many of you know there's a right path and there's a wrong path? The right path is what the Word of God teaches. Amen? God has given us all the tools that we need to accomplish this. And we're going to talk about five. The first tool is this. Love your children in the way he or she should go. Somebody say, love your children. Amen? Amen. It's very important to love your children in the way he or she should go. The first commandment is to love the Lord with all of your heart, soul, body, strength, everything within you to love God. Amen? Amen. And then to love your neighbor, what? As yourself. In Matthew uh, 22, verse 37 and 38, the Bible says Jesus replied. He was asked the question, what is the most important uh, commandment? And he says, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. Amen? Amen. How many know we need to show our kids that we love them? That's right. How many know a hug is something that is done silently, but it has a lot of words of encouragement and language? Amen. Yes. Amen? A lot of people in our world today need a hug, and they're not getting it. That's right. And when they do get the hug, they're getting it from somebody else who doesn't necessarily have a godly thoughts about getting or giving that hug. Right. Amen. Dads need to hug their daughters. Dads need to hug their sons. Moms need to hug their sons. Mom needs to hug their daughters. Amen. Amen. How many, you, know, uh, uh, you know, some things that we do, we don't have to say, but love is all over that. Amen. One time somebody asked me and said, well, Pastor Craig, when, when you um, have to do a, a funeral service and you go not to necessarily to, you know, to do the service, but I mean to, to go ahead and to just, what do you say to people to encourage them? The best thing to do sometimes times not say anything yes. you go through that that line you know this the, the receiving family sits up here the lost their loved one the loved one is right here in the casket amen and and uh, and you just go through and just just they know that you're there amen. your presence will encourage them amen. you don't have to necessarily say the right thing amen well I don't you know they've heard it all anyway well don't worry I'm sorry for your loss you know God will be with you and so just be there for them amen. Sometimes you don't have to say anything. Just your presence there is saying everything. Amen? Amen. Act like you love them. You've got to love your kids and act like you love them. Amen? Give them your time. Somebody say time. time. How many know time is a very important commodity? Amen? Amen? It's 24 hours in one day. And many times we get caught up in working. We get caught up in doing
doing this or doing that, and yet our kids are on, on the wayside. Amen. How do you know we got to give our kids our uh, time? Amen. Praise God. Glory be to God. You know, our faith, uh, my daughter brought over a couple of um, little boys that she babysits sometimes, and uh, they came over to our house, and she happened to ask, and she says, you know, Dad, the, uh, you know, just talking to the kids, grilling up some hamburgers a few weeks ago on the, on the grill, making dinner, and then finally, you know, just talking to the kids, just regular conversation and so forth, you know, when they were on the deck talking and so forth, and all of a sudden, next thing I know, she, she walks in the house and says, hey, the kid's dad wants you to come out. We're playing wiffle ball in the front yard. They want you to come out and play wiffle ball. I'm saying to myself, I haven't played wiffle ball probably since I was there age. <laughs> and the first thing I thought of as a, as, a, as a mature man was, I don't want to play wiffle ball. But then I said to myself, it's like the Holy Spirit spoke to me and says, go do it for their sake, not for yours. Amen. It means something to them. Amen. So I just went out and I played some wiffle ball. It was, it was actually a good time. It was fun. I was out there for about an hour, hour and a half, praise God, and you know, just hitting that ball and so forth and running around and acting crazy, but praise God. Amen. You know, sometimes we have to do things for other people because it means a lot to them for the children. Yes. Amen. We can reach out and minister to them in those particular ways. Amen. So time is very important. Children should see and feel their father's interest in the things in which they are interested, such as games, grades, school, and friends. Amen. Amen. You know, praise God. If we're interested in what they're interested in, then that shows that we are connecting with them. Amen. Even if we're not necessarily interested in something that they are interested in. Let's learn about it. They'll be our teacher. Amen. You know, if you're not into hockey too much and, you know, you're watching the Stanley Cup playoffs or whatever the case is, amen, and they're into hockey and you're not, just ask them. Ask them about the game. Sit and watch a game with them. Amen. amen. You know, talk about it with them and stuff. Amen. Bring them to a hockey game. Amen. amen. Praise God. Whatever. But get interested in the things that your kids are interested in. If they have work, ask them how work was. Amen. You know, what's happening in your life right now? How are you feeling? Now, this is one question that doesn't happen many times to a husband and wife. How are you feeling? Well, uh, you know, work was pretty good, this, that, and the other happened. I didn't ask you that. I said, how are you doing? How are you feeling? What, deep down in your soul right now, what kind of thoughts do you have? What kind of insecurities do you have? Tell me. I want to listen. Amen. Amen. Amen? Because that's important. And many times we go through life, we don't understand. But how many know that's important to ask that question? How are you doing? And it doesn't mean what you've been doing. It means how you're doing. Amen. Praise God. So how many know we also got to pray together with our kids? You know, before you, you know, just pray together for them. If they're going for a job interview, say, wait a minute, let me have a word of prayer for you. Come over here before you go on that interview. Let's pray that God would, would give you favor for that job. Let, let, me, let me have a word of prayer for you that God puts a hedge of protection around you when you go out and take 911 calls. Amen? Because, you know, every time I hear a siren now, I think of my daughter Faith. See, I'm very proud of her. She's 21 years old. She's an EMT. And, uh, you know, she's in Lawrence. Uh, working for Patriot Ambulance Company and uh, whenever I hear a siren I think okay is Faith working right now? That could be her and that siren. Lord please put a hedge of protection around her protect her and let her save souls and she's already ministered to people in the back of the ambulances amen and, and you know people that have tried to commit suicide who do they call? They call 911 and then they run down and they try to save him. An 18 year old boy she was talking about uh, almost tried to kill himself, amen, and she was going ahead and ministering the word of God to him in back of the, of, the, uh, of the ambulance and by the time he got there he had a smile on his face. He went from crying ready to kill himself to smiling thinking, you know, I do have hope in life. Amen. You know something? Things happen to us for a reason. The amen. They happen for a reason and when we look at our jobs, no matter what you do, as ministry, that totally changes everything. Amen. Well, Pastor, what do you mean? I work at, uh, you know, Market Basket as a cashier. What do you mean ministry? You can minister to people going through that line. Amen. Amen. Right. What do you mean? That I work as a bank teller. You can minister to people being a bank teller. Amen. How many you know if you look at your job as ministering, you work as unto the Lord as the Bible teaches, that will change everything. Amen. Amen. How about saving souls for Jesus? Amen. How many you know that's awesome? Praise God. The second tool is this, uh, uh, fathers, discipline your children. How many of you know discipline's a good thing, not a bad thing? I thank God for his discipline. If God did not discipline us, we'd be in trouble. Isn't that correct? Amen. Now, a lot of people today don't like to hear that word discipline. Oh, discipline. I don't want to be disciplined. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 24. If you refuse to discipline your children, it proves you don't love them. If you love your children, you will be prompt to discipline them. Amen. Wow. You know what that says? If you don't discipline your kids, you don't even love them. Yes. That's huge. Hallelujah. Amen? Amen. Can I hear an amen from one of the kids? Amen. Just one. <laughs> amen. I got spanked when I was a kid. Amen. 
I did several times. When I was bad, I was like, remember my mother's words, wait till your father gets home. Oh, brother. Lord, please don't let five o'clock come. In Jesus' name, take me home now. <laughs> I'm going to get whipped. I disrespected mom. I'm in trouble. Mom's wrath is upon me. Oh, brother. Amen. How I many of love and discipline go together? Amen. Bible says in Proverbs 22, verse 15, a youngster's heart is filled with foolishness, but discipline will drive it away. Uh, you see, a little two-year-old youngster, let's say, for example, uh, you know, you have a fireplace, you just moved into a new house, the fireplace, and they want to go and touch it. They see that flame, and they want to touch it. Now, you as the parent, I got to go, wow, look at that, little Johnny wants to touch the fire. Let's just watch. Quick, get the video camera. You're not retarded, okay? You're the parent. You're going to pull them back. You're going to spank them and say, don't go near that again. Because yeah. you're going to be scared that they're going to fall in the fire and kill themselves. Because yeah. you love them. Yeah. Now, at first, they're going to go, oh, daddy doesn't love me. He just spanked me. Oh, he just doesn't love me. He doesn't want me to have any fun in his little two-year-old mind. He doesn't want me to touch those beautiful yellow flames. They look so nice. And they, they're so nice and warm. I just want to get the experience of feeling them. And I see those, those, those little coals down there, those red things, you know, they look really cool, they're glowing, and I want to touch one and pick one up. Yeah, of course you're not going to let your kids do that. Why? Because you love them. Yeah. At first, when you spank them, they're not going to understand what you're doing. You're taking away my fun. Yeah, now, then they get to be 18 years old, and you try to tell them some wisdom. I wouldn't do that because, you know, I experienced that, and this is what happened. I wouldn't do that because of this. But then, of course, when you're 18, you feel like you know everything. Amen. Yes. Mm -hmm. I've lived the life. I know it all. Yeah. I am an official KIA. Know it all. <laughs> Dad, you're too old. In your generation, you know, I'll tell you what. Dad, I can do anything just once. Okay, then. Try to jump off the Empire State Building just once. <laughs> Try to take a whole bottle of pills just once. Amen. Amen. Try to speed and, and, and go 110 miles an hour just once and lose control of that vehicle. So that's a lie. I can do anything just once. Amen? Amen? You see, when you see your own kid going in the wrong direction, you pray for them and you don't want them to go in the wrong direction. Amen? We've all, how many of you know we've all done that, though? Yes. Somebody say glory to God. Glory to God. Not me, Pastor. I'm holy. I was always living in... Okay. Amen? And sometimes we go up in our relationship with him. No, I won't experience this. God's saying, you don't want to experience that. No, I, I won't experience that. So, so then you, you go ahead and do it, and you're like, oh, gosh, I shouldn't have done that. How I many you know we reap the consequences of our actions? Amen. Amen. And God loves us, and he doesn't want us to do that. Proverbs 23, verse 13 and 14. Don't, fall to, don't fail, rather, to correct your children. They won't die if you spank them. I love New Living Translation. Amen. They won't die if you spank them. Amen. Hello, this is God's word, not man's. Amen. Amen. Well, I don't know about that. Dr. Ruth said if you spank your kids, they'll turn into psychological, um, um, you know, uh, just, just totally, totally psychologically ill when they grow up. Well, if God tells me to spank my kids, they're getting spanked. Amen. I don't care what Dr. So-and-so tells me. Amen. God gave us padding on our behind for a reason. I give him a timeout. You need a timeout. Amen? Amen. Somebody say praise God. praise God. A little spanking never hurt anybody. Amen? Amen? I thank God I didn't turn out psychologically ill. Amen. Or did I? <laughs> Am I here? Just kidding. I was spanked as a child. Now, how many of you know there's a difference between spanking a child in love and then going to them and hugging them after they get them there crying and saying, now, do you know why daddy spanked you? Amen. Because you were doing this and I told you not to do that. And if you did do that, you would have hurt yourself. Daddy spanked you because he loves you, not because he doesn't. Amen. Now, it's a different story when you lock your kid in the closet. That's abuse. Amen. It's a different story when you punch your kid or you kick him. Amen. That's abuse. Amen. Amen. When you give him a love pat right there, just spank him, and you hurt his feelings more than his little behind, he learns something. Amen. 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 So I'm not advocating abuse. Amen. 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 But how many you know the, the best, you know, when we discipline our kids, they're going to also respect authority when they grow up. Amen. It's just a fact. Yes. They're going to respect that, that, that police officer. They're going to respect, you know, the, the law and so forth concerning that. Amen? Amen. Now, physical discipline may well save them from death, is ver what verse 14 goes on to say. Amen? Praise God. Now, how many you know we've got to follow through with consequences? Amen? Amen. 
Now I'm taking the keys away, you're grounded for a week. You're not getting the car. After two days, well, okay, here you go. You gotta follow through your consequences because you're just basically teaching them. If you don't, then they know you're a pushover, so you're gonna say something and they, you're gonna back off on it anyway. Amen. So they're gonna just keep on doing their game, amen? amen. And how I many you know a lot of kids like to, like to you know, they, 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 they're kind of like psychologists in a way, and I'm not saying psychologists do this, but they, they're really smart, and you, they're smarter than you think, amen. and they try to pin mom against dad. Yeah. Well, dad said I could take, no, mom said I could take the keys. Yeah. Well, what do you mean? I didn't say that. Then mom and dad are in the bedroom arguing about it. What do you mean you take the keys? No, you shouldn't take the keys. Ah! Talk about it before you make a decision. Amen? Amen? Praise God. Be in agreement because agreement is the place of power. Amen. And if you two are in agreement concerning your kids, then they can't play those games. Amen? Amen? Consistency is the key to discipline and following through with consequences. This is the KFC rule, and I'm not talking about Colonel Sanders and Kentucky Fried Chicken. Amen? The KFC rule is this, BK for kind, F firm, and C is consistent. Amen? Amen. Kind, firm, and what? Consistent. consistent. Amen. Proverbs 29 verse 15 says, To discipline and reprimand a child produces wisdom, but a mother is disgraced by an undisciplined child. Proverbs 29 17 goes on to say, Discipline your children and they, and they will give you happiness and peace of mind. How many know we need peace of mind as parents? Amen? Because let me tell you something. You get a little older and you, you get into your 50s, you start feeling muscles in certain places in your body that you haven't felt before. Amen. Amen. Your brain still thinks you're just 20. So when your brain says, body, yeah, you can go ahead. You can do this, that. You can move those and move this and move that. All of a sudden, your back starts talking to you the next morning. No, you can't. Amen. I'm 54. You can't do that no more. <laughs> Amen. So you kind of slow down a little bit. Amen. Praise God. You know, you just kind of, you know, do that. And, and if you teach your kids good, then they're going to go ahead and say, don't worry about it, Dad. I'll cut the lawn. Don't worry about that. I'll move those things. You just, you know, I'll take care of the speakers. I'm not, I'm not going to have you move those. Amen. I'll take care of this or I'll take care of that. They'll just step right in and they'll, they'll, they'll bless you. Amen. Amen. Why? Because you've been there for them and you love them. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. So we got to know and understand that Proverbs also, uh, chapter 15, verse 20, goes on to say, Sensible children bring joy to your father. Amen. Proverbs 23, 15, My child, how I rejoice if you become wise. Amen. All of us love when our kids become wise, Amen. when they make good decisions in life. Yes. Amen. We all rejoice as parents with that. We want to see our kids successful. We want to see our kids have a closer relationship with God. We want to see our kids get good jobs. Of course we do. Why? Because we're their parents. In fact, we want our kids to do better than we have done. Amen. Really, amen? Because that's why we help them along the road of life, amen? To see them do even better. Thirdly, the third tool is lead them by example. Not do as I say and not as I do. Understand, dads, that your influence upon your children is very, very powerful, amen? amen. Now, how many of you know you can't expect your kids to go to church consistently all their lives when you don't go consistently? Amen. You can't expect your kids to do daily devotions when they don't see you doing daily devotions. Uh, you can't see, uh, expect the kids to work and get a job when they're of age when you don't work. Amen. How many know children should see their father working? This makes children understand the value of money and teach their children to be industrious. Amen. Isn't that correct? Amen? Praise God. You know, I have a 1996 Camry. And, um, you know, uh, that, there's kind of a history in the Camry. Joshua, that was, that was his, uh, his uh, first car and bought the Camry. The Camry eventually got totaled. Then the Camry was rebuilt. Then uh, a while after that, the motor died on the Camry. Uh, the transmission died on the Camry. This thing is kind of like the Bionic Man. It's been rebuilt, I don't know how many times, amen. But now it has another motor in it. And Hannah was faced with the situation after Faith bought a car. Faith used to use the Camry. And uh, then, then I asked Hannah, I says, you know, the, the motor, it needs a $1,500 motor in the Camry. Now, if you want me to have that motor put in by the mechanic, you're responsible to pay for those bills. Amen. You have time to do it. But that means you have to work. That means you have to pay in order for the, consistently for that motor to be paid. And of course, if she went out and bought a car for 700 bucks, it would probably break down and be in even worse shape or whatever the case is. Amen? Amen. But how many of you know it's very important that she's been paying those, those payments of 200 bucks a month to try to get that thing paid off, and it's almost paid off. She only owes 600 bucks on it now. Amen. Amen? But I mean, that's why as parents, sometimes if, even if we have the money, we gotta say, wait a minute, time out. If I go ahead and just buy her a car and pay her insurance, and pay her excise tax, and pay for her gas, and pay for everything else that comes with the car, repairs, whatever. I'm not really teaching her much. 
But if I teach her the value of working, the value of making money, amen, then she's going to learn in the course of life, I have to be responsible. Amen. When I put my money in the savings account or checking account, I got to make sure that I don't buy things that I just don't need. Amen. And that teaches them the value of money, amen? amen. Because let me tell you something, money is very important, isn't that right? Amen. And it really, you know, I mean, you can go ahead and you can buy a house or whatever the case is, but if you can't pay that note, if you can't pay that mortgage, it, there's nothing in the world like tossing and turning at night. You can't sleep because you can't pay it. That's torture. Amen? Amen? So how many of you know God, God says a lot about money in the Bible? Amen. amen? We give our first part, our best part to Him in our tithe of 10%. We go ahead and we bless Him. Amen? Praise God. We go ahead and we use our money wisely. How many of you know if you pray, God can make you walk into situations where you'll be blessed? Amen? amen? amen. Recently, uh, Agnes, you know, she, um, uh, for $2.99 for um, laundry detergent, she recently bought several bottles for 50 cents each. You say, how's that possible? Three dollars down to 50 cents? She's very smart going through coupons. Amen? She waits till the item goes on sale, then uses the coupon. Amen. How many know that's smart? Amen. Amen? Amen? You know, the Bible says to be wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove. Yes, it's talking about sharing the Word of God, but the Bible also tells us that He gives us wisdom concerning money. Amen? Amen? How many times have you waited for something and all of a sudden, you know, you uh, go ahead and, and you know, the, the Lord says, no, don't pay full price for that. And then, and then a couple of days later, you go to another store and it's half price on sale. How many of you know God blesses us? Amen? Amen. You know, credit card companies, do you realize you can make money from credit card companies instead of you paying them, you can make them pay you. You get the credit cards that have 5% cash back every now and then. Amen? They run certain specials and so forth. Amen? I have a credit card right now, and uh, starting July, August, and September, it's 5% off on gasoline. Now, what I do is I go down to BJ's in Haverhill, Amen. And I use the credit card. Now, how many of you know some gas stations charge a little more money when you use a credit card? Well, BJ's doesn't charge more money. And I'm a member there. And that's the lowest price around anywhere for gas. So I go there, I use my 5% off credit card, and I pay the full balance when that bill comes in, and I make sure I have it in my checking account. That means that I don't buy certain things that I just want. I only buy what I need. And now, if I, when I keep on doing that, 5% off on restaurants and so forth. What happens is all these points accumulate and then you tell you call them up and say, yeah, cut me out a check. How much is that? 175 bucks. Amen. Well, that's pretty good. Amen. Credit card company just paid me 175 instead of me paying them interest and fees being late. Amen. You know, if you really are good with your money like that, you can actually make money from, and your credit rating keeps on going up, by the way, too. You get in the 800s, Amen. like I am. Amen? Amen? So how many know you can use the credit card companies and they don't mind. They want you to do that. In fact, they want you to charge everything. They're hoping that you <laughs> can't pay the bill so they can make their ridiculous 25% interest. Amen. Somebody say glory to God. Amen. That's the truth. Amen. God is such an awesome God. Amen. He can give us some wisdom. But we have to have discipline in order for that wisdom. Amen. So if you're somebody that goes into the mall and says, oh, I want that dress or I want that suit, I want this or I want that, and it's a lot of money, you don't need it, you can't do that if you're going to be doing things like I just said. Amen. you got to say, no, I'm not doing that. I'm going to do this instead. Amen? Amen? Somebody say glory to God. Amen. So we got to lead our kids by example. Amen? Praise God. Influence is very, very important. Amen? Proverbs 10 verse 5 says in the Word of God, A wise youth works hard all summer. A youth who sleeps away the hour of opportunity brings shame. Number four, I'm almost done. The fourth tool is educate them according to the holy word of God. Deuteronomy 6, verses 5 through 9, it says, And you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, and all your strength. And you must commit yourselves wholeheartedly to these commands I am giving you today. Repeat them again and again to your children. Talk about them when you are at home and when you are away on a journey. When you are lying down and when you are getting up again. Tie them to your hands as a reminder and wear them on your forehead. Write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Praise God. Amen. Oh, church, how many of you know it's not the public school's job or even the Christian school's job to teach our kids about the Bible That's right. in prayer? It's ours. Yes. It's our responsibility. Amen. Amen. Now, how many know things come at the home? You don't send any kids out and say, you learn over here. It's not even the church's resource. The church, you know, we teach the word of God, but how many know it's at home where the rubber meets the road? Amen. Amen. So we got to make sure that we teach our kids about God. Amen. How many know we need to teach our kids about, about uh, sex education according to God's word? 
How many kids are learning about sex through pornography or the internet porn? Amen. That's not a way for a kid to learn about sex. Amen. It's about, Dad, you sit down with, with little 11 or 12-year-old uh, son, and you talk to him about the birds and the bees. Mom, you sit down with your daughter, and you talk to her about the birds and the bees. Amen. It's not an embarrassing subject. God's Word says a lot about sex. Amen? Amen? Amen. It's got to be done in His way. Amen? Praise God. What about morality? Amen? we got to be, you know, have good morals. We can't blame the public school system when our children are in trouble with the law. I just saw something recently on the internet, I mean, um, on uh, Facebook. And, you know, they post these things on Facebook. If you have Facebook, sometimes they post these uh, little signs or whatever. And uh, one person wrote, Dear God, why do you allow so many shootings in the school systems today? And then God's answer was, You kicked me out of the school systems years ago. I'm not allowed to be there. They don't allow prayer in the school systems? How do you expect God to turn around and do something about it? How about these kids, instead of blowing people's heads off, walking in schools, how about getting prayer instituted back in our public school system again? How about instituting prayer back in our graduations again? How about putting the Ten Commandments back on the walls of the Supreme Court? How about going ahead and moving forward in the name of Jesus and speaking out against abortion and murder? Amen. Amen? Amen? See, people don't want to talk about that stuff. Oh, you, you, uh, you, you fluffed my feathers, or whatever the case is. But how many know that's according to God's Word? We're the salt of the earth, amen? We're the light, amen? We need to tell people the truth in these areas in the name of Jesus, amen? What about the fifth tool is prayer? We got to pray for our children night and day, amen? Very important, uh, parents, to pray for your kids. Pray a wall of protection around them. You got to watch and pray. Yes. Prayer is so important, amen? amen. You got to pray for your kids, amen? No matter what type of job they have, it doesn't matter. You, you pray for them. Lord, protect my kids in school today. In Jesus' name, I pray you put a hedge of protection around them. Lord, protect them from, uh, from ungodly um, people, influences in their lives, from friends and so forth. Protect them to, ha to have your word, amen, in, in their hearts and in their life, amen? Let them live according to your word. So dads, how many you know it's a very important responsibility? Dads these days have to stand up for Jesus, amen? Yes. Lead their families. Amen. Lead their families to the family altar, amen? amen. Lead their families to church. Amen. Come on, family, we're going to church. I don't want to go to church. Nah, come on, we're going to church. Right. Amen? we got to go ahead and be leaders, not followers. Amen. Too many fathers today are followers, and their wives are the ones in church and not the husbands. Right. The husbands are staying home, amen. amen, and justifying it, I've worked a hard amen. night. But yet the poor women are working third shifts on Saturday night, and they're coming to church on Sunday morning. They're faithful. That's right. And that's a tough thing to do. Amen. Amen? And I'm not putting dads down by any means, but how many you know all of us need a little spanking sometimes? Amen. And that's when God does that, and that's when we can move forward in victory in the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Let's stand to our feet and close in a word of prayer. Father, in Jesus' name, we just thank you for our dads today as we celebrate them. This is Father's Day. And Lord God, I pray that you'd bless them, bless the children, bless the wives, Lord God. Bless whole families, Lord God. I pray in Jesus' name that you just move by your spirit upon Changing Lives Christian Church, Lord God, your church. And we just pray, Lord God, that we can move forward, win souls for you. And we thank you for that, Lord. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.